Gotcha. <laughs> Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities comes as a treat for the fans who have waited so long for a decent horror anthology to come their way. The horror veteran brings in eight delightful episodes that deal with unexplained and supernatural stuff, and with Guillermo del Toro in charge, you can be sure to get some creature features and Lovecraftian elements along the way. After the haunting first episode, we now bring you the second, titled Graveyard Rats, and we will break down the episode for you while exploring the twisted creatures that you will find here. Beware of a few spoilers going ahead. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Graveyard Rats Greed The Greatest Monster This is one of the episodes that gets going with great conviction and the very premise of a graveyard is somewhat unsettling for the viewer. It is also a period piece that is premised in the 1900s Salem and the director Vincenzo Natale wastes no time in getting straight to the point from the very first scene. Before the episode begins, we have a brief appearance of Guillermo del Toro who acts as the host to guide us into the story. He spares a few words about the significance of graveyards and what lies beyond and sets the tone for what is about to come. The story opens with a couple of grave robbers who seem to have pried open a coffin and are busy collecting the valuables. From the looks of it, they appear to be small-time thieves who are content with anything valuable that they might find. However, their heist is cut short by a gentleman who appears from behind the trees. The man introduces himself as Mason, the steward of the graveyard. The caretaker whose job is to oversee the security of the cemetery. Seeing that Mason has a gun pointed at them, the grave robbers surrender immediately and hand over their findings. Mason then proceeds to lecture them about being respectful towards the dead is the backbone of human civilization, and how these lowlifes are undermining this basic human value through their heinous acts. Much to their relief, the grave robbers are allowed to run away with a strong warning. Just as you start to think that Mason is a sincere caretaker of the cemetery and an honorable man, he reveals his true self. The moment he is alone, he jumps into the grave himself and proceeds to look for other valuables in the coffin. He notices a golden tooth in the corpse and breaks it loose but the tooth drops from his grip and falls into a hole beneath the corpse. As he tries to reach into the hole, Mason is bitten by a rat and he gives up his pursuit. It becomes clear that Mason is simply a loudmouth and all his reverence toward the dead is just a show. Later, he brings the valuables from the grave to a man. This guy seems to mean business and he is the one who allows Mason to be in charge of the cemetery business. However, he also needs the returns to be substantial and we learn that Mason has been failing to deliver for quite some time now. Robbing the graves and digging through the valuables of the dead seem to be his only way of making money and paying up. The man dismisses the findings of Mason once again and remarks how time is running out for the caretaker. He warns Mason of dire consequences if he fails to pay up in quick time. Mason tries to reason with him trying to explain how the rats have become a real nuisance in the graveyard, pulling the corpses underneath the surface but the man doesn't seem to care much for excuses. He gives Mason a week to find suitable riches, failing which he would find himself in one of the coffins. Now the caretaker is cornered and seeks desperate measures. One of his old acquaintances, Dooley, works with the coroner and Mason pays him a visit. He quickly scans through the dead bodies in the morgue, but none seems to have anything valuable on them. Just when he almost gives up, he comes across the recently deceased body of a wealthy shipping merchant. Mason is delighted to find that some of his teeth are made of gold, but when he attempts to rip them out, he is stopped. Dooley doesn't agree to tamper with the body of such an important person because the coroner might take notice and asks Mason to be patient for a day until he is buried in the graveyard. Much to his delight, Mason discovers that the merchant would be buried with a sword that was gifted to him by King George himself and he realizes that a successful robbery would get rid of all his financial troubles. As Mason returns to his humble abode that night, we see more of his personality. He is someone whose means are rather limited, and he sees his grave robbing activities as his only out of his miseries. He has a nightmare, or should we say a premonition, where his ceiling breaks and unleashes hundreds of rodents all over him. The next day, he oversees the proceedings as the merchant is lowered into his coffin and then placed in his grave. He feigns great compassion and sorrow over his demise and promises the merchant's wife that his resting place would be cared for. He doesn't wait long before he pries open the coffin in order to grab all the valuables. However, Mason is in for a nasty shock 
as he discovers that the body is being dragged into the deep burrows underneath by the rodents. He tries to grab onto the body by the boots, but the rats win the thug of war and the body disappears. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Mason realizes that failing to retrieve the dead body of the merchant might well mean his own death, and takes the leap of fate as he decides to step into the elaborate tunnel networks. These are dark and narrow stretches burrowed by the rats over the years, and Mason barely fits through the underground tunnels. He is armed with his pistol and his flashlight, which is obviously the only source of light in this sea of darkness. He struggles with his fear and claustrophobia, but his journey soon gets a lot worse than he could anticipate. Hundreds of rats charge at him all of a sudden, and the poor grave robber is shocked to his wits. In his desperation, he tries to shoot them, but all he ends up with is a bullet in his own foot. Wincing in pain and shock, he barely manages to hide in a corner when he is greeted by the most terrifying sight in his life. He watches in horror as he spots a gigantic rat as big as him. This beastly creature creeps up to him and sniffs him intently as Mason lies there holding his breath, inching his hands toward the pistol. Finally, he manages to put a bullet in the creature but also gets bitten by the beast in the process. As he desperately tries to get away, he falls into one of the tunnel networks that lead further below the ground. It is a rather long fall and Mason ends up in an underground hallway that seems to be a black church where strange deities are worshipped. The entire room is filled with hundreds of skeletons but Mason's fear soon turns into delight after he discovers that the skeletons have jewelry and other valuables around them. Clearly, all that the rats could consume are stocked up here, and Mason thanks his lucky stars for stumbling upon these riches. He excitedly grabs all the valuables around him, when suddenly his eyes spot a strange deity with a tentacled face and wings on its back. On the opposite side of the deity, there is a devotee with folded hands, but the devotee is simply a rotting corpse that has almost become like a statue. What catches his attention is the gold pendant on the neck of the devotee and this brings us to one of the most shocking moments in the episode. Just as Mason rips out the pendant from the devotee, the corpse wakes up and tries to get it back. The grave robber is in shock but he still tries to get away with all that he has gathered and stumbles out of the passageway. The zombie-like devotee continues to be in pursuit but Mason is a lot faster. Just as you think he can get away, the gigantic rat appears once again from the opposite direction. He is trapped with nowhere to escape but once again, he gets a lucky break after he successfully triggers a landslide within the tunnel. A massive rock drops on the giant rat, smashing it to death, and the corpse of the devotee gets trapped under the debris. Throughout his ordeal in the tunnel network, Mason keeps praying to God for respite. He seeks mercy for his actions and promises to turn a new leaf once he gets out safely. But is there any redemption for the damned? He observes a glimmer of light at a distance, and he is thrilled to realize that he is so close to escaping the confines of the hellish tunnels. He struggles through the tunnels to reach the source of light, and his hope soon turns into disappointment. He finds out that the light was simply coming from the reflection of his own flashlight on a shiny plaque, which ironically reads, May he rest in peace. After all his hardships, Mason simply manages to get himself stuck in one of the empty coffins. The body was presumably been taken away by the hordes of rats and now he finds himself trapped in his worst nightmare. His agonizing cries of despair are soon silenced by the attacking rats who make a quick meal of his insides. The last scene brings us back to the two grave robbers. From the first scene, they are surprised to find the corpse of Mason after they pry open one of the coffins in the graveyard. Much to their shock, they discover that the corpse has been eaten by rats completely from within, and the sneaky rodents have made a passageway in his body, emerging from his mouth and moving all around. Although the narrative sounds terrifying, there is always a subtle comical touch in the scenes. It is more of a dark comedy that comes with the simplest of morals. Greed kills. Mason is not one of the characters that you feel sorry for, but at the same time, He's not exactly an evil man. The story, much like the first episode, deals with a protagonist from the lower section of the society. One with financial constraints and the actions of Mason are determined by his desperation to survive. The episode also offers the perfect climax, gory and shocking, but also a little comical. The storytelling ends with a food for thought for the viewers, and this is surely among the best episodes of the series so far. <laughs> Exploring the creatures, giant rats and undead corpses. This episode wouldn't have been half as delightful without the amazing creature effects. 
The scenes with the rats look so real that they will make you squirm in your seats. The giant rat is a sight to behold, and it looks adequately menacing. It is just as big as Mason, if not bigger, and the long sharp fangs do not conceal how dangerous the creature is. It is constantly salivating, almost like a rabid dog, and the glowing eyes add to its terrifying presence. The giant rat, however, is not exactly good with strategy because Mason outsmarts the creature on two occasions. But his army of thousands of rats is relentless, and they even avenge the death of the giant rat. These rats might be small creatures, but together, they are shown to be freakishly strong, enough to pull a human body into the depths of their tunnels. Back in the underground hallway, the creepy deity had a rather shocking design, but the real fear factor was actually hidden from the most innocuous corpse of the devotee. The skinless, organless, zombie-like structure waking up in a dark hallway littered with skeletons has to be the scariest possible situation for someone stuck there. Luckily for Mason, the undead corpse was not exactly fast or lethal, and it couldn't land a killing blow on a grave robber. In fact, it only seemed to be concerned about retrieving his piece of jewelry more than anything else. <laughs> is Mason's greed the primary monster? If we had a dollar for every time a monster story is actually about the evil within humans, we wouldn't be eating Pop-Tarts for dinner. Jokes aside, this is not one of those stories where you have to struggle to find the morals. The narrative clearly highlights that the extreme greed and desperation of the protagonist brought about his downfall, and a lot of the elements in the storytelling are simply metaphorical representations of the monsters within Mason. He chose the despicable act of dishonoring the dead, and his senseless actions eventually bring about his tragic death. Yes, the graveyard rats are the agents to bring him his fate, but he did write it himself through his actions choices. Marvelous Verdict A stunning display of horror with impressive VFX. We have already spoken about the brilliant creature effects, but even the directorial skills deserve a special mention. The shots within the tunnel networks are remarkable, and the use of the flashlight to light up the surroundings was a really smart idea. A constant feeling of claustrophobia grips the viewers the whole time, and the storytelling has an entertaining touch to keep you engaged. All in all, Graveyard Rats gets a strong thumbs up of approval from our end, and we hope you enjoyed the episode just as much as we did. Do let us know in the comments below what are your thoughts on the episode or your views on the giant rats and the zombie-like entity. Check out our other videos on the series and treat yourself to the unending maze of horror. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.